an open source project which would code whatever and the next step after I create a website that would cover all the or one error Hey guys, it's been raining since morning, so we're gonna have a cozy stay at home vlog today. But wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm in Canada, right? And didn't you think I won't show the solar eclipse? Alright, so I have three topics that I want to talk about. The first one is uh, the speed of development. The second one is uh, different access tokens in my application and how I handle them. And the third one is plans for upcoming months. So the speed of development wasn't that great and uh, I want to explain what my initial idea for this project was. So I wanted to create an open source project so I could learn and build something great. And I want you guys to collaborate and learn how to build real world projects with me. I committed to creating this service and covering with all possible tests, but the reality is those tests are taking too much time and I want to be 100% honest with you guys. Probably I'm gonna drop some tests because without them I'm moving much faster and also I wanted to get this app to everyone as fast as possible, but testing was the main stopper for me. My own contribution frequency decreased almost to zero. But I got my motivation back after I watched a couple of videos of solo developers and you know what? They don't do testing either. The majority of time it's only manual QA because they need to deliver the products as fast as possible. Then they could see if it succeeded or not. And if yes, great, they could invest more time to make the service more reliable and maintainable and cover with all the possible tests. So you got the idea. Then I was asking myself, why can I do the same? So I did and I implemented first core features that are basically a foundation of Playlist Mate. Now let's talk about my application security a bit more. I believe that I didn't explain how I handle different tokens and I'm gonna start with the Spotify ones. So Spotify provides us two types of, of tokens. The first one is client token and the second one is user token. Both they allow to access Spotify resources. But the main difference is that the client token allows us to access publicly accessible data and the user token allows us to access user specific data. As an example of public data that could be information about artists or a track or Spotify search feature and speaking of user data that can be information about user itself, user music library and music preferences. And now the fun part. As you know, all the tokens has expiration date and I'm gonna explain how I handle that. Right, so usually when my backend wants to get any data from Spotify, it makes authorized request with access token 
to get the data and Spotify returns it back. But on my next request, I provide the same token, but now the token is actually expired. And here Spotify returns error and it explicitly says that the token expired. And there are multiple ways how we can handle that. First one, instead of reusing the same access token multiple times, we can ask Spotify to return us a new token for each request. The second way, we can make a scheduled job that would update access token when it's about to expire. But honestly, I'm not a big fan of scheduled job. So the third way and the one that I implemented in my application is to update the access token every time when Spotify explicitly says us that the token expired and at this point i'm gonna refresh it and finally with new token i retry the same request and get the data back all right spotify credentials are covered and now i'm gonna explain playlist mate's own security so basically it's almost the same as in case of spotify frontend asks for data backend sends it back and when the frontend sends a request with an expired token Backend replies with the 401 error, in other words, unauthorized. So the frontend understands it should get a new token. So it sends a request to refresh the token, and then it retries the same request again and successfully receives the data. But let's say this didn't happen. And instead of getting a new token, the client gets 401 again. This means the refresh token that is stored on the client is also expired and the client should get a new token. But the only way to do that is to log in into application from scratch. So the client should log out the user. And that's it. Pretty simple, right? By the way, if you want to become a skilled software engineer who creates modern, robust and maintainable applications without unnecessary complexity, my partner's course careers will help you to become one. I genuinely believe that their software development fundamentals course is a great starting point that will take you from absolute basics all the way to interview prep. Course careers get you all set to land an entry software engineer position. You will build a solid understanding of data structures, algorithms and system design, which can be a game changer in the actual interviews. Also, you will try yourself in both backend and frontend, choose your path, and go beyond the basics to more specialized topics. You will get access to the Discord community where you can network with other students, mentors, and your instructor. You will be building your own projects that will be reviewed by your mentors who already are in the industry. So if you guys want to break into tech, there is a free introductory course that you can take with no obligations. And most importantly, without any prior experience or degree. Also, if you use my link, you will get $50 off from the full course. All right, so now let's check how I handle tokens in the code. So I have an abstract class that would handle this logic that I described previously. So basically the method receive the supplier, which would call whatever Spotify API it is. And if it gets an authorized error, I'm gonna refresh the token and retry the supplier function. And the same approach for user APIs. If I get an authorized error, I'm gonna refresh the token, but in this case, it would be not the client one, but user specific token. And speaking of playlist mate security, I'm using JWT token. And when the user logs in into the system, I'm generating the user token that would contain access token and refresh one. Also, I use additional annotations that helps me to secure my controllers. For instance, for refreshing the token, I have a scope for user refresh token. And for user API endpoints, I have only playlist mate user scope. And what I mean by scope is basically each token has its own responsibility for all API endpoints, the client should use user playlist mate token. And if the client needs to refresh the token, it should use the token for that exact purpose. Otherwise, my application would refuse the request and return for one. All right, enough about security. Let's talk about plans. So since I want to deliver this project to you as fast as possible, I decided to start focusing on visuals. Because I have a few core features on the backend and I don't want to spend time even more on that. So yeah, I'm switching on the front end. And here I, I will need help from you guys. So currently I am choosing the UI components library and in my list is material UI, main time and next UI. So let me know if you work with any of those and know any downsides or advantages. 
And the next step after I create a website that would cover all the backend features would be to create uh, detailed instructions and guidelines how you can guys contribute to the project and how you can run it locally and modify anything. For that, I'll update my Docker Compose and publish it along with the front and backend. And probably there would be a config server. And those are my plans for the next couple of months. Finally got my motivation back to move forward with this project and getting more and more excited about making the repos publicly accessible.